Okay, now that we've learned how to simulate a single coin flip, let's make a new app that uses that knowledge to flip a coin many times. And for this, we're going to use a loop algorithm. So I'm going to begin by saving my project as coin flip experiment. And then I'm going to make some changes to the user interface. And to begin with, I'm going to put a horizontal arrangement up at the very top have the width of that be fill parent and I'm going to put my image in there and I'm going to change the size of my image to a small number of pixels like 50 by 50 uh, by 50 and then the other thing I'm going to put in there is a label all right and I'm going to have that it's a fairly large font 30 and I'm going to have the label say coin flip experiment okay and I'm going to name that label label title all right then I'm going to put another horizontal arrangement in here all right underneath that one and uh, I'm going to also have that one fill its parent in terms of width and here I'm going to put in a text box and we'll put a label as a prompt for the text box so the label is going to be label n and the text for the label is simply going to be n colon and some spaces. Right after that, we're going to put a text box in that horizontal arrangement. This text box is going to be named text box n. But we want to make this so that we can only put numbers in it. So I'm checking off numbers only. And then I'm going to take this button and I'm going to put it in that horizontal arrangement as well. I'm going to rename the button, let's say button, button go. Okay, and what it's going to do is run the experiment. Okay, below that, I'm going to put another label, and this is going to be label results, and I'm going to have that also fill its parent, and I'm going to change the font size to 24 on that. So that is our user interface. Let's now switch over to the blocks. We already have a simulation here for flipping the coin once and what we're going to need to do is flip it n times and we're going to keep track of that we're going to count how many times it comes up heads so i'm going to need a couple of new variables for this one variable i'm going to need is one that represents n how many times we're going to flip it of course that's going to start at zero initially another variable i need is one to count the numbers of heads so i'm going to name that n heads We'll start that at zero also. We're going to redo this button go to run our experiment now. All right, so the first thing we need to do when we run this experiment is we need to input from the UI what the value of n is. Now that's what the user has typed in. I'm going to set n to that value. I'm going to read it from the text box. So I'm going to get the text boxes text and we know that it's a number because we set it to numbers only the user can only type in numbers the next thing we want to do is make sure to initialize number of heads to zero every time we do this we're going to have to make sure it's reset to zero so number of heads is going to be set to zero all right now we're ready to run our experiment and for that we're going to use a loop we have several choices. We have the for each number loop from one to five. We have the for each item loop that works with a list. And we also have the while loop. That's the most general type of loop. I think this is a counting problem. So I'm going to pull out this loop here. What we want to do is count. Number is going to vary. Number is a variable, as you can see. It's a local variable used just in this loop. But it's going to vary starting from one up to five by one well of course we don't want it to go to five we want it to go to n so we're going to go from one to n by one so if n is a hundred this loop will iterate 100 times and what do we want to do each time on each iteration well the first thing we want to do is flip the coin so this simulates the coin flip and then we want to check if the coin is heads we no longer want to set the picture. We're not doing that. We want to 
add one to the number of heads. We want to count one for the number of heads. So I'm going to call set heads to a sum of the current value of heads, its current value, which I use the getter to get, plus one. So this is going to be a heads. Do we need to count tails? We could, but we don't really need to. So I'm going to get rid of the else block. We can calculate tails by n minus heads when we're done. Okay, and so that leaves the last part of this to report the results. And we're going to report them in the label results. So we're going to set label results. We want to set its text. And here we're going to use concatenation. So we're going to concatenate the results we need. We're going to join them together. Really, we want to just report the number of heads and the number of tails. So the first thing we're going to report is heads. And I'll type in the word heads, colon. And then I'm going to simply take whatever value this variable is and show it there. The next thing we want to do is report tails. So I'm going to do a similar kind of thing. I'm going to have a, a prompt to identify what it's reporting. This is going to be tails. I want to actually skip some spaces here. It's tails. And then I need to do some math here. So I need to subtract the value of heads from n. So n minus n heads will give us tails. So to review, we initialize our algorithm by getting the value of n. That's going to tell us how many times to run this loop and then setting heads to zero. We iterate through the loop from 1 to n by 1, so that's n times, or if n is 100, it's 100 times. Each, on each iteration, we flip the coin, check if it's a heads, and if so, we add ones to the number of heads. We add 1 to the number of heads. When the loop finishes, so notice that this block is at, after the loop, uh, we display the results. Okay, let's see how that works. I'm going to put in 100, and then I'll run the experiment. Wow, 42 heads, 58 tails. That didn't seem like a fair coin to me. Uh, run it again a thousand times. That looks a little better. So there's a an app that will run our coin flip experiment for us. What we're going to do in the next lesson is we're going to use this app we just wrote to actually do an experiment in class to see just how good App Inventor's random number block is.